Welcome to Focus Garage. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the brand new generation Ford Explorer. What? Oh, Do the Dora the Explorer. Dora the Explorer. Ford Explorer. So anyways, you may have already seen in automotive news some pictures of this and thinking that it's just a uh, facelift on the current generation, and you'd be wrong. wrong. <laughs> this is a brand new Ford Explorer, new chassis, new powertrain options, all new. So I'm going to let Andre jump into this and explain to you what exactly is new with the powertrain. Yeah, let's talk about the powertrain. Uh, start with the base model, what the base model would get, and, uh, and then we'll move on with the other options. So the base model gets a 2.3 liter uh, EcoBoost engine that's four cylinder. You're gonna be like, well, that's what the same base model on the other Explorer. Wrong. Um, you'd be wrong, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because the other one was a front wheel drive version of that engine, and this is gonna be the real wheel drive version. So that's, that's new on this chassis as well. And this engine is gonna be more closer to the uh, Ford Ranger and Ford Mustang en uh, engine than the Ford Explorer or the Focus RS or the M Lincoln MKC. Whoa, wait a second. The Mustang, the Ranger, aren't those rear-wheel drive? Yeah, I just said it. I, I know. <laughs> so this is rear-wheel drive? Yeah, I just said oh. it. <laughs> oh, man, you're So like for those so... of you that are following along there at home, that's right. Ford is making this switch from that previous terrible front-wheel drive Explorer back to its roots to a new rear-wheel drive configuration. OG is back, baby. And the benefit of that is the towing. Towing, Tell us. yeah. So the the first gen uh the older generation previous, gen. previous generation towed three hundred uh three thousand pounds three hundred pounds <laughs> three hundred pounds three thousand pound with this uh, uh engine the new generation uh gets a twenty horsepower bump and two thousand and three hundred pounds bump on the uh, towing capacity if you get the right combination so they'll you, probably have a towing package with you know yeah. a better hitch some oil coolers maybe yep. a tranny cooler something probably like that. Tra transmission cooler speaking of transmission. It's going to have 10-speed transmission, automatic, which everybody loves. It's the same transmission that's going to be uh, that's in the Mustang and Camaro and F-150. And I believe it's on the Expedition, too. But we, so, might, yeah. we might, that might be back. an 8-speed, but close yeah. enough. You know? So the, this 10-speed uh, transmission is amazing. Uh, yeah. can take a lot of horsepower, and it's going to be amazing in this chassis. So the next engine... Uh, we, we know is that 3.0 EcoBoost V6 engine, which is a twin turbo V6 engine. And when this engine first came out, uh, you know, Ford, Ford Motor Company was using this as a Lincoln exclusive engine. Yeah. You know, they said they're going to put this in their higher end vehicles, you know, more geared towards more horsepower, things like that. And lo and behold, you know, Lincoln isn't selling so well. So Ford's like, ah, put a lot of R&D into this engine. Let's go ahead and move this <laughs> yeah. into the Explorer so we still have links to put this in. And when we were at Auto Show, that's what I told Mike. That I was like, you know Just what? give it time. <laughs> yeah, just give it time. It's going to be on the Ford lineup. Yeah. I was I was thinking maybe like the Mustang yep. or like the uh, F-150. I never thought about Explorer because it was a lost cause of front-wheel drive. But Ford is back, baby. They're putting it rear-wheel drive, and then we're going to have a lot of fun with this car. <laughs> so it's a 3.0 twin-turbo V6. Yeah. And what can or how much horsepower does it make in the Explorer uh, configuration? This is gonna make somewhere around three sixty to three hundred eighty horsepower, which is a bump from the three point five liter EcoBoost engine. Yep, uh, smaller displacement, more power. Yep, and this engine was making uh, four hundred horsepower in the Continental uh, spec. So this tells you that this engine has a lot more room to grow. Yeah, they haven't released what's altered from the Lincoln, whether it's you know different yeah. turbos or you know different uh, tuning or whatever, but. Um, you know, I've seen people tune these previous generation Explorers and F-150s and things like that. So, you know, I bet that you give it a little bit of time, people will be putting some mods on these, bolt-ons in the tune, and you'll be making probably, you know, well over 400 yeah, horsepower. Yeah, and I'm these. just guessing that uh, this is just my guess from comparing the what was the 2.3 on the Explorer versus what was on the Focus RS or like the MKC and the Focus RS. It was, it was, I, 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 it was the same turbo, same engine. It was just less tuned because of the these cars were uh, towing. The so type of use a, of the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, there's a chance of towing, so that means there's a lot of uh, heat coming into the engine, so you don't want high horsepower when you, you know, need Tune more, it for longevity, more not yeah. performance. So, you know, if you if you tune this engine, just keep in mind that... You're, you're going to shorten the longevity yeah, of it. That's when you're towing, anything. yeah. So, 
that's that's all the drivetrain we have. We know that there's going to be a SC variant of this uh, exploder. So let's talk about that a little bit here. I want to share some kind of thoughts about yeah. this because... Um, you know, tell, was, me, tell me where it hurts. Oh, uh, <laughs> show me where they hurt you. So I was reading Jalopnik, which obviously you should never do if you are emotionally attached to cars here. So Ford confirmed they're going to make an ST version yeah. of this. They didn't say what powertrain they're going to use, although it'll probably be a tuned version of the 3.0. Uh, I you doubt know, they're going to I put, think they're going to put the... 2.7? Uh, nope. Uh-huh. 3.5 from the Raptor. That would be freaking sick. I mean, I'm it just makes no sense, but I mean, <laughs> why not if you're already doing that? I mean, but it's the same. You can, fit, if, if it will fit in there. It definitely will, because rear wheel drive, everything like that. So there is the option; they'll they'll go that route. I'll be curious to see. But uh, the topic of me kind of want to venture into the ST line of it is that um, this triggers a lot of people. You know, people think that ST means something that it is designated to. You know, a front wheel drive hatchback with a manual transmission. And nowhere ever was ST reserved for that. I mean, Ford through the years has had a zillion different performance names for things. I mean, you've got, you know, Shelby, you've got SVT, you've got ST, you've got RS. And they always have these little spins of, you know, what their performance models are. And, you know, it's flavor of the month, man. Like, right now... I'm going to stop you there. There's some heritage. I understand. There, there's heritage behind this. Yeah. But their most recognizable performance segment right now is ST. So they're going to run with this, and you know they've already got the Edge ST, and now obviously it would only make sense if they're going to have a um, Explorer Sporty model. They're going to have the Explorer ST. Do you think they're going to have an Explorer Sport anymore? I don't. I think this no, will, they're this not will gonna, replace that, right? This is this is replacing the Sport. But here's it. Here we can argue this all the time. But when you go back to Focus ST, ST is coming from Europe. Focus, yeah, and, and it's coming from Europe, and it was never offered in U.S. Before 2013, well, there was a 2007 Focus SD. Oh, yeah. That was just an appearance package. And you get a 2.3 uh, liter engine that the didn't really make... Yeah, Duratec yeah. engine that didn't really make any much horsepower. But if but, you own one, you're special. Yeah, but it's a cool car. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but um, the SVT was the American uh, version... Of an ST. Of the ST. And... They closed down SVT, so no longer S- SVT. Well, they so used to, the Mustangs what, used to be SVT Cobras and things like that. So, yeah, SVT was their American performance division, yeah. whereas, like, ST was more of their global performance division. Yeah, because, like, you're right, ST's been in Europe. There was no such a thing as SC SUVs, though. Exactly. So There was never been. And this is this is going back to S- SC means a lot of people are hot hatch. That's, yeah. that's what it means. It means it's it's like a rally car toned down to street. All right, RS, I'll give you the definition. RS is a rally here. car. ST stands, it means something. Yeah. Sport technologies. Nowhere in that does it say hatchback. Nowhere in that does it say turbocharged. Nowhere in that does it say manual transmission. I sport have... technologies. So they're taking yeah. sport technologies, they're applying to an SUV. Yes, it's not true to the well, origin all right, of Let's SD. get back to the topic of <laughs> 2020 Ford Explorer. Ford Explorer. All right. Interior. What do we think? We got an iPad on the dash a la Tesla. How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, I think they upgraded a lot of things. The base model comes with a lot of technology. Uh, you know, you, you see it in the interior, such as a 4G LTE connection, which Ford is saying that they're going to put this technology in every single car they're coming out with. You know what's funny? I feel like, um, and this is not a Chevy fanboyism at all, Chevy has kind of tried to popular, uh, popularize that for a while, having, you know, the uh, wireless connectivity yeah. in the car. I've been hearing, you know, commercials about low-end Chevys having this for years now. And yeah. I think it's a good move because, you know, you've got, obviously, I'll let you venture into your little phone connection there, but, yeah, you can have your car as a Wi-Fi hotspot and... No, this is this is like completely like your four G. But this is like a completely different internet from your phone. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying is the benefit of this too is what you're gonna say. Oh, is that like I was gonna say that you apps. get the Ford yeah. app, which you can control unlocking, locking your car, and starting, which uh, Chevy had it for a really long time. And now a lot of other brands have this too. I know Kia, Hyundai has yeah. it, and it's the most convenient thing ever because if you guys have a traditional remote start where you have to go by a window and make sure there's connection, so you're you know get the radio yeah. signal. Now, as long as your phone is internet and your car is internet, yeah. you can check if your car is locked and unlocked and remote started from anywhere. And this was a great thing. Like, Chevy was, like, I remember the commercials that the person is, like, flying. Yep, did I lock like, my car? Like, did I lock my car? I was like, oh, there you go. I locked it. But, I mean. It's nice. It's it's a very nice convenient. And uh, I am just glad that this technology is coming to other brands, too, because it's really nice. And I wish, you know, Ford kind of did this uh did this in a way that's like this is like a keyless you know you don't need your key to get in and get in and out of your car no. with the keypad i wish that technology the keypad technology comes to old other brands too where you don't need your key to get in and get it 
like get inside your car or lock your car you know yeah. with the keypad on the door pad you can just like i mean door panel can just do that and this is like such a good technology to have and you have but other... is it really necessary when you've got a smart key with the integrated fob on the, the handle well here, here's the thing what if you don't want to carry your key you, you go to a gym or something like that you want sure. to lock your key in there which we have done a lot no. when i had my focus sc we would lock our keys into the car yeah. Well, when I had my, I still, still had my it. focus. But yeah, it's convenient. You don't got to take yeah. a fob with you when you go to the gym. You can just leave the fob in the car. Exactly. And, so it's yeah. such a nice technology to have. And going. And back now that to, it's nicely integrated, they put yeah. them in the pillars and not this clunky. Uh, yeah. Entry panel on the door. It's, yeah. it's really nice. And going back to the interior of the uh, Ford Explorer, they took a lot of cues from Lincoln. Yeah, We're, exactly. And this is car. This car this, it shares the same chassis as the Aviator, the Lincoln Aviator that's yeah. coming out in 2020. It's exactly the same chassis. Which you can see that with the interior design, with like the technology throughout the entire car, you your base model gets a lot of technology. Yeah. Going, talking about technology, this is like blind spot monitor. You get uh, rear cross traffic uh, uh, collision, um, like what is it? Early collision detection, warning, alert, detection, yeah. whatever. Pass like a, a a lot of safety tech in this. Yeah, yeah which on a base model. Whatever. Yeah, on a base model, it's amazing. But then you're like, okay, this is probably what every other base model is going to have. Because, Moving forward, yeah. yeah, I mean, everything's going to be more geared towards technology. But I do want to take a quick second here and kind of touch on that interior. I think Ford is kind of playing to their strengths because when the Navigator came out, the new generation, mm -hmm. it blew all of the GM stuff out of yeah. the water. I mean, people compare this to like a uh, Suburban Tahoe Escalator or whatever, and oh, it was man. Navigator leagues was like, above oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we got a lot of time with it at the auto Cadillac show Cadillac had year. no place in this. The Cadillac felt ancient compared yeah. to a new Navigator. So I think Ford... Uh, you know, saw how successful that was, and they want to take a lot of the technology and upscale, you know, trim and put it into their Explorer because they want to make that more successful than yeah. their counterparts. And going to the rear wheel drive uh, good platform move. that makes the car like more luxury than, uh, you know, your standard CUV. Yeah. You know, now Explorer. It goes back to that truck kind of. Yeah, Explorer is no longer, a, like, you don't see that as a CUV because it's a rear wheel drive. It's a truck again. Yeah, yeah. truck again. So that, that just separates itself from the cheap part and makes it more luxury. So yeah. which, is, which is really nice for the brand and then the model itself. You're separating yourself clearly where you're not cutting into sales exactly you don't want to cannibalize yourself like that so i'm hoping that we'll get to have some time with us at the chicago auto show i'm not sure yeah. if they're going to have this they probably will um, i'm so, assuming they would yeah. so i'd like to get maybe some specific footage of this because this does interest me I, I do like that uh you know it's a big change from the previous yeah. model and uh i don't know if it was uh, a sales driven uh initiative that maybe the previous generation wasn't selling as well as it should have or just you know through research that they learned well, that the they should probably last couple back. of years uh they weren't selling that well big suvs they, weren't doing so everybody's buying crossovers well mm -hmm. no no not because of that but because of the where the other brands are more updated mm -hmm. compared to the folk uh ford explorer yeah. because it's it was old but when it first came out there the, the sale deal. was like huge yeah yeah. So I think they're going back to upgrading everything to going back to separating themselves from the other competitors. And this is like a great time because SUVs still sell a lot. Yep. So, and I think we have gas prices being low right now and everything like yeah. that. This should be an appealing buy for a lot of people. And uh, as long as it's priced right, which, you know, mm -hmm. SUVs like this are going to get more expensive. But people buy them anyways. You know, yeah. it should be a good car. So. And if they have a great tune on it from the factory because Ford is, uh, I mean, they make great engines. You can argue about that. They do have pretty good but factory tune, engine tuning. Yeah, the yep. tune is not... It was their for, first uh, turbo engines were not that good because you either got uh, power or you got uh, fuel economy. And it was really hard to get fuel economy on a daily, regular driving because where you have You're to accelerate and yep. all that. Yeah, you always have to boost. So I'm hoping that with this uh, new generation, they, are, uh, they learn their lessons and they have better technology... Like with their, the way the head flow, the way the turbo, like twin turbo. Yeah, Ford's been doing I mean, you know, turbocharged engines turbos, for a while yeah. now, so yeah. you know the, the tech is really advanced for them. So yeah, this, this should be a win. I'm just hoping their fuel economy uh, uh, numbers results are respectable for a yeah, vehicle that size. The, no, it would be more natural result from the, where you get in your driving. So like your daily day driving, you should be able to achieve those numbers. Yeah, uh, of the EPA yeah. results there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's go back to uh, the exterior. What do you think about the exterior? It's not a huge change, um, but it is enough of a change where, you know, if you see one of these on the road compared yeah. to a previous gen, you're going to know there's a difference. Um, I think the exterior is, you know, obviously not, not striking, not shocking or anything like that, but 
it's right in line for a vehicle of that, uh, you know, trim and everything like that. I think it's going to still have like the LED headlights from the previous generation, yeah. LED tail lights. So it's got you know more of that upscale uh, design with it, and it you know, kind of fits again in the uh, Ford design language. It's, it's a decent looking truck. Yeah. Now you can say it's a decent looking truck. It's a truck again. Yeah. yeah it's a truck again. So we're hoping that Ford uh, comes out with the Fo uh, Explorer SD with a more aggressive uh, suspension and like gives it a, at least a try. The, a, a lot of people love the Edge SD because they do. They they actually put a lot of uh, resource to the suspension setup and the engine power the power transportation. Is all yeah. yeah, so it's completely different than the regular Edge. And it the Edge Sport was not as uh, upgraded from the regular Edge. You still had like yeah. you get a sport suspension, but it wasn't like a real sport suspension. This is a lot different. Yeah, yeah the ST is the chassis is stiffer and all that. So yeah. the they gave true SD treatment to the Edge SD. Yeah. And it's just not in what you would call a traditional SD yeah. vehicle. And know? we're hoping they, that the Ford Explorer gets the same treatment because it's a nice platform to have. It'll a be lot cool. Of I mean, not yeah. gonna lie, it'd be cool to have a vehicle. I mean, it would like be it would be truly or something it would like be that. truly competing against X five M's and X four M's. And now that you mention it, man. X5. X5M, yeah. Uh, X5M, yeah, X five M, yeah, X five M or like SQ five. Yeah, SQ five, like yeah. And now that you mention it. it it is a possibility that they could put the Raptor engine in this. I really don't see why they wouldn't. And, and that would be freaking sweet in a Ford Explorer. It would be Explorer. really nice. I mean, it doesn't have to get the same Tuning, Raptor tune. You know, but same turbos or whatever, but yeah. still, the potential. It would be nice. It's a it's a solid engine. They use it in the Ford GT as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, different turbos, different tuning. Yeah. But it would be really nice. And what do you guys think? Do you guys think that SD is going to be all-wheel drive or real-wheel drive? That's, yeah, that was that's a, a, good a big question. jumping point, yeah, because a lot of people wonder, you know, for the true performance aspect of it, which yeah. is it going to be, but we'll leave that for you guys to decide, and obviously, as soon as we know, we're going to make a follow-up video on this. Exactly. It's yeah. an interesting car, truck, vehicle. Well, no, no longer mm -hmm. Focus, no longer Fiesta. This is what we got to look at. You US know? market, so we have to like look at the SUVs now. No. But, I mean, there are other car companies that are still uh, providing hot hatches and whatnot. Toyota is in the game, too, so... But we're it's an interesting there's inter stuff out there interesting couple of years yeah. of waiting for us but yeah i think we're gonna wrap it up here we've definitely uh, rambled on quite a bit about this vehicle so yeah. uh, if it, you do have anything that uh you want to mention on that we didn't talk about uh, go ahead and drop it in the comments down below and let us know your thoughts on the uh, ford explorer and the uh, new explorer st that's gonna be coming what do you think yeah thanks for watching you guys can always reach us on a folk, uh, facebook or uh facebook, facebook garage at focus garage and also Instagram too. We're pretty good at responding back Real any quick. questions. Yeah. We get a lot of questions, a lot of suggestions. We thank you for uh, contacting us yeah. and making it look like you guys are interested. We'll continue pumping out videos for you guys. So kudos to all. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.